Hi everyone, and welcome back to Senior and Living Today. Are finances putting a stranglehold on you? Are you feeling like when you go to the grocery store or actually anywhere, when you're paying your rent, your mortgage, your utility bill, that things are just financially out of control and you're trying to figure out how you can stretch your income, how you can make extra income, how you can help to make ends meet. There's always more month left than there is money. If you're trying to think about things you could do to help with that as a senior living today, some of you could and maybe should consider caregiving. We all are living on tight budgets and are looking for extra income or maybe not extra income, maybe income. Maybe some of us have retired and have decided that it's time to go back to work because financially you can't afford not to. So I wanted to talk about one of the options for us in our age bracket that kind of comes naturally for us or a lot of us. A lot of us grew up independent. Our parents were, our mothers were starting to work at an age that we were little from my generation. And so we were those latchkey kids that had the, you know, the shoestring with the house key around our neck. And we were very independent people. And as we grew up so independent, we also grew up naturally caring for others. We cared for those that were younger than us around us. And if we didn't have younger siblings, most of us, if we were girls, we started out, our first job was babysitting someone else's children. And we were, what, 12, 13? Now 12 and 13 year olds don't do that as much, but we were very independent and responsible and that's what we did. So we are, a lot of us are natural caregivers. So as we're struggling through the financial times that we are, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about a financial option that might benefit some of us and that is caregiving. And there are a few reasons why I think caregiving might be a good option to help with your finances. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna name some of those and I'm sure I'm gonna miss some. And I want those of you who are caregivers to chime in and tell me and tell the others what it is we're missing, what other points we need to make. But I do think that caregiving should be something that's considered. One, because there's such a high demand for it. There's so many people out there who need care. And if you're looking, you see agencies and independent families advertising everywhere looking for responsible caregivers because there is such a need. Our population of the aging is so large and there, there aren't enough people to care for all the people who need care. So if you're thinking for a full-time or a part-time job to help with your finances, I think we should discuss caregiving. And so that's what we're gonna do. So some of the things or the reasons I think that caregiving should be on your list is because with caregiving, some people need care 24 hours a day. And so with people needing care 24 hours a day, if you are looking to be a caregiver, you can work almost any hours and any days. So the, the varying of the hours and the days is helpful, especially if you're looking for it to supplement an income or if you have family you're taking care of and when you don't have them, that's the time you're trying to fill with caregiving. So I think caregiving offers you a lot of time flexibility. If you want to, you know, you have a full-time day job and you want to work weekends, caregiving will offer you that. You can find something that's on the weekends. If you work weekends somewhere else, you can find some Monday through Friday caregiving shifts or jobs. So I, I love the flexibility with that. As a caregiver, I always worked full-time day shifts somewhere else in the medical industry. And I did my caregiving, hospice, respite, and general caregiving weekends and evenings. So I might get off work at 3.30 in the afternoon and I would work like a six to 11 caregiving shift. So it is flexible. You can negotiate the hours that you need to, that you need to work. So you can have nights, you can have weekends, you can have days. People love it if you pick up holidays because families want to get away from the holiday for the holidays and they need, might need someone to come in and care for their loved one. So caregiving is a good choice. 
especially if you have another job. One of the great things about caregiving is I have not noticed a lot of age discrimination. As we are in our, a lot of us are in our 50s and 60s, when we're in the workforce, we do discriminate, are submitted to some age discrimination. And so I, I'm not finding that in the caregiving industry. In fact, when I have interviewed with private caregiver uh, families that need care, they're always pleased that I'm a little older. They appreciate the age. They assume that you know how to cook and how to clean when you're a little older. They are happy that if you are staying with one of their relatives, that you're more able to understand their background. You are able to communicate with them on the same level. You're familiar with the uh, same shows. You have experienced the same history in life. You have a little bit of the same wisdom and they are thrilled that you are not 12 years old. They are happy that you are not spending the majority of your time with their loved one on your electronic device. They are very happy about that. And that is something that comes with maturity. And so there is a lot less age discrimination, I find, in caregiving. I want to know if you guys find the same thing, but I, I do appreciate that. Now, there are some drawbacks to caregiving, and I'm sure a lot of you are aware of some of them. But one of the biggest drawbacks is, if, especially if you're of a certain age, is the long hours. I have found it difficult to find eight-hour caregiving shifts. The shifts are that I have come across most are 12-hour shifts, seven in the morning till seven at night, seven at night till seven in the morning. And that is a long time. A lot of people that I have talked to have wanted, you know, an eight hour shift, which is difficult if you are caring for a family. When you get there, the family member's going to work. They're going to work an eight and a half hour shift. You have to allow for their commute time there. You have to allow for their commute time back. And so it does equate to a 12 hour shift. So if you are looking for a four hour shift, a six hour shift, an eight hour shift, you do have to do a little more hunting around because most of the agencies that I've come across want 12 hour shifts, which makes you have a 13 plus hour day because you're commuting there, working 12 hours and commuting home. That can lead to sleepy driving, etc. So I would say that the long hours can be a drawback if you're looking to care give, it, it can be difficult. Also, the benefits are low. Sometimes there's no benefits at all. There's no medical, there's no dental, some there's vacation, but it's very limited how you can go about getting time off. Um, one of the other drawbacks is the low pay. Now, if you're certified, you can command a higher pay if you're working privately, but if you are working through an agency, the agency is getting the higher pay and you're getting a standard rate, which is considered to be very low. So a lot of people go to caregiving and they migrate out on their own and work privately. The problem with working privately, you can command your own hours, you can command a higher pay, but then you don't have the backing of the agency. Now, if you are working for an agency and you become ill, you can call the agency and say, I'm, I'm sick, I'm gonna need someone to cover my shift. Well, that's a lot harder if you work privately. Who are you gonna call to cover your shift? There's no one. So that is a tough one there. And you're getting more pay, but you're not getting the backing of an agency for non-covered shifts or if something goes wrong. Agencies can supply you know, extra training. They can supply extra advice. If there is a situation, there is a number you could call. So there is a lot to be said for the agency having your back. I have, I'm going to say 75% of the time work for an agency and I don't regret it at all. I love the backing of an agency. So you have to keep that in mind when, when you are looking for picking up a job as a caregiver. Think about the ins and outs and what is going to work best for you. It is nice to be able to negotiate your pay and your hours when you work privately, but then there's no one to count on other than you. If you become sick and you can't make your shift, the family is looking at you, where otherwise the family could call the agency and say, we need someone else. That is another thing. When you work for an agency and you have a client that you just feel like you are not connecting, 
you can call the agency and say, can you find someone else to come into this position? And when you do, then find another position. For me, we aren't quite meshing. You can't do that if you are working privately. So keep that in mind. The caregiving industry is well underserved. And so if that is something that you are passionate about, like me, then I say, by all means, do it. Don't let your age hold you back. Don't, don't let the hours that you need to work hold you back. There is something out there for you. So you just need to do a little research and find out what will work best for you. Think about caregiving as a job for you and know that at some point, someone in our family may need it and we will be hiring possibly for the same position. So consider all sides of it. I hope this has been helpful for you, some things to keep in mind. Maybe this will help you with your finances as we can all use a little help with that probably. And um, don't forget that at Senior in Living Today, we have the Ask a Question segment. We also have our Super Senior segment and I would love for you to submit your seniors to me and your questions and I will be happy to answer all of them. Um, please don't forget to prepare that we have our Living Legacy Planner, which I think is helpful for everyone that you're caring for and for yourself. So keep that in mind. It is available on Amazon. Please, please, please do not forget to like and subscribe and share our channel and this video. And I look forward to seeing you next time right here on Senior and Living Today. Take care.